Jesus appeared to him. And everything that everything that Paul knew to be right, everything that Paul knew was, was written in the law that he could pick up his scriptures and he could read, this is what God says. Now God is the one said, Paul, why are you persecuting me?
that Paul understood that there should have been no, 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 no sacrifice good enough for him. But he tells us right there in Romans 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Once you make that decision in your life to walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh, the Holy Spirit becomes part of you and begins to work in your life. And He begins to take you in a way different than the way you were going. Because in verse 2 He says, For the law of the Spirit of the life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. You know, tonight we've heard a lot of testimonies and a lot of sorrows. And there's there's a lot of there's a lot of things going on in this world of Alaska right now. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is moving to this part of Alaska. I believe the Holy Spirit is moving all over the world. And I believe that God is doing a mighty work. And, and God is sending people out. And God is, is trying, is just as, as, as passionate as Paul trying to convey to his people, God is trying to convey to his people, would you please accept Jesus Christ? He's not making a requirement. He's not saying if you don't, he's begging you, please. God is saying, would you please accept that my son on the cross free for your sins? Would you, would you please let him come into your heart? That you would be saved and, and taken away from the curse of sin? Would you give him an opportunity? Would you please just try it? Just, just give it a little try. Just, just try it on one time. Just get on your knees and say, Jesus, I need you. Because when we, when we come to that place and we realize that the very best that I can do and everything that I've learned and everything that I know to be true and everything that I've tried to do to be a good old boy just ain't going to get And Jesus comes into your life and he begins to work in your life and he begins to reveal the truth and the peace that you can have. So that when, just as the lady gave testimony, when something tragic in your life, you can say, I sing praises to you, baby. Oh, Lord. And the peace becomes part of your life. And I just recently had, had the opportunity to share a sermon where Paul writes, he says, In all things, with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, make your needs made known unto God. In all things, Paul says, pray. Praying is worshiping. Praying is saying, come into the place where you're on holy ground, like when Moses came to the burning bush and, and God told him, take your shoes off, you're on holy ground. If, if before we bring our, we don't want to go run into God and say, oh God, I got all these problems. We want to go run into God and say, God, I know that there's no one that can take care of my problems like you can. God, you are the most magnificent God in the whole world. I sing praises to your name. I want to come to your presence and I want to be in your presence and I want to be speaking to you face to face. And when we begin our prayer, when we begin our time with God that way, all of a sudden, our, our, the importance of our, of our needs begin to melt. When we come to the presence of God and say, God, you are glorious God. Lord, I love you, God. I praise you, Lord. All of a sudden, what I needed isn't quite so important. It doesn't have the, the, the oath that it had. It has lost something. It has gotten to the place that, and what's more important is not praise the Lord. Under the presence of God himself, the presence of the God that, that, that appeared to Paul in the Damascus. And he says, would you, would you, let, me, would you let me help you? We're, you're, you're, we're here today and we have things going on in life and we have hurt feelings and we have sorrows and we have needs and we have things. And then Jesus has said, would you let me help you? Would you, would you just give me a chance to come into your life? I stand and knock at the door. If any man would answer, I'll let him in. He's knocking on the doors of hearts all across this world. All across this country, Jesus Christ is, is coming to you and he's knocking on your door and he's saying, would you give me an opportunity to help you out? Would you, would you let me share my love with you? Because I died on the cross because I love you so much. And I came and I died for you on the cross. Would you, would you give me a chance? Would you let me try to help you just a little bit? Would you let me wipe away those tears? Would you let me show you a better way of living? 
Would you let me show you the way of living in that cost of peace? If we go on down to chapter 8, to verse 6, it says, For to be carnally minded is death. I mean, you can't put it any plainer than that. To be carnally minded is death, Paul says. He's trying to convey to the Romans, just like God is trying to convey to people today. To be carnally minded, to be mindful of what's going on physically right here in front of me, that's death. There's, there's, no, there's no good end to that. It's not gonna, it's not gonna turn out good. Enough. It's not gonna be something that's gonna be fruitful. He says in verse seven, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither it can indeed can be. So then they that are in flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Tonight the spirit of God has, has been very obvious, very evident. The scripture tells us where two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be also. And he's here. And, and, and he's pleading and he's, he's asking you, please, would you give me an opportunity? Would you give me a chance? Well, would you just take a chance on me? We take a chance on so many things in our life. We give so many things opportunity to do something in our life, and yet we, we step back and say, well, I don't know about that, Jesus. I had a friend of mine uh, back home that, that I wound up at the hospital the day we left Thursday. I wound up at the hospital, a reaction to a medication. And his doctor was from Pakistan. He's in Tucson, Arizona. And the doctor came in yesterday and asked Gary, he said, what kind of drugs have you been taking? And Gary said, what do you mean? He said, well, all you do is talk about Jesus. Amen? Amen? We all need to have a little bit more Jesus in us. Amen? We need to be saying, I need to have some Jesus in me. I need to be telling everybody about Jesus. I need everybody to think I've been taking some kind of drugs because I'm telling about Jesus. Because Jesus is going to save your life. To be totally minded is death. To be Jesus minded is life. Life eternal. Life. Not just here. Paul says, for, for me to live is Christ. Paul realized that, that Jesus Christ has saved me from death and had taken away the condemnation of sin and realized that every breath that I take now is a blessing from Jesus Christ. Every morning when I wake up and I see the sunrise, that's Jesus Christ giving me another opportunity to tell somebody, somewhere, somehow, some way, what he did in my life. And he wants to do something in your life tonight. He wants to come into your life. He, he, he wants you to just give him a chance. Come down and say, Jesus, I really, I really want to give you a chance. I'm going to take a chance on you. You can come down with an attitude. You can come down and say, all right, Jesus, I'm going to give you a chance. I'm going to get on my knees and ask you into my heart. And if you really need it, if you really give him a chance, he comes in. And then you're his, because the Bible tells us, no one, no one can come unto me unless my Father in heaven draw him. And if you come down here and you make that for God, he never drew you down. Susie, did you want to sing a song while well, I do an invitation? Susie had a song that the Lord gave her to, to do while, while, while we can take time for an invitation. And there's, there's plenty of people here that are praying with you. Pastor Chad is here, Pastor Paul is here, Pastor Marie is here, and my wife is here. There's lots of people that are praying with you. You don't have to come down here to me. As they sing this song, I want to invite you in the name of Jesus to come down. To come down here and, and we'll just get together right here and we'll pray. We can pray for, for healing in your body. We can pray for anything that's on your body. You know, today, the National Earth, the American Evangelical Association today has established a day for all churches to take five minutes to pray. Every person in every church across America, take five minutes. If you've never prayed before, if you pray every day, if you pray every five minutes, take five minutes and pray. Take five minutes and just talk to Jesus. Just talk to God. Because he loves you so much that he sent his only son to die on the cross for you. And he just wants to talk to you just for a minute. He just wants a few minutes of your time to talk to you and say, you know what, I love you. And, and I, I want your life to be a blessing. And I want it to be joyful. And I want it to be full of hope. 
and I want it to be for you. That's the life that I created for you. If you'll give me a chance, if you'll let me come in your heart, if you'll let me work, if you'll let me change you, because the Spirit of God can change you from a broken man. The Scripture says, if any man is in Christ, be born in a new creation, all things become new. Thank you. 